Well, this is exciting. We're, G and I today are doing one of our joint sermons that we've been doing once every few months. Maybe we'll start a podcast uh, someday. Doing this. Um, so today, the re- our gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, as it has been for the last six weeks. Uh, and Gia and I were talking uh, earlier this morning, uh, and we noted that we, the two of us have different reactions to uh, preaching about the Gospel of John. I love preaching John. This is a mystical gospel for me that is best understood when you think of it as uh, John is, wants you to experience Jesus. He's not going to give you information about Jesus. He wants you to experience Jesus, and I love preaching that. I look forward to him every time he comes up in the lectionary. And you, David, I think you regard him with a little more resignation, maybe? Like, oh, it's John again. Yeah, I think w- when I'm scheduled to preach and the gospel is from the, go- is from the gospel of John, especially those parts of the gospel where Jesus is teaching, I often have the thought, well, this is going to be a challenge to preach about. <laughs> but it is a worthy challenge, uh, and digging into the, to the gospel of John can yield wonderful spiritual fruit, and today is no exception. Uh, So today, uh, Jesus is teaching uh, a crowd of his followers, uh, and he gives this difficult teaching. Uh, Those who eat my flesh will live forever. Sort of an odd statement to make, uh, and it can be confusing to hear. Um, And so Jesus is not surprised uh, when several of his followers say, "Ah, that's difficult, we're going to not follow you anymore. Uh, and, and actually after that, Jesus turns to the followers who have not left, and he says, do you also wish to go away? In other words, Jesus is, is asking his followers, do you still want to follow me uh, now that you've heard this uh, kind of difficult teaching? He's giving them a choice. There's several times in the story of God's people, in the story of the Bible, where we hear about these decision points. We got one of them earlier this morning in our reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua succeeded Moses as the leader of the ancient Israelites. He's the one who guided Israel over the Jordan River and into the land that God had promised to them. Joshua is coming to the end of his life. He has completed the work God gave him to do. He's done it faithfully and well, and soon his life will end. But there's no obvious person to succeed him. He's going to leave the Israelites pretty much on their own. In the Promised Land, the Israelites are surrounded by other tribes, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and each of these tribes has their own local gods. Joshua has been leading the people for decades at this point. He's a savvy enough student of human nature to realize that without a Moses, without a Joshua to remind the people to be faithful to God, to call them back to God, the people are likely to chase after these other gods. In fact, they've already done that, both in the 40 years they were wandering in the wilderness and during the long years that they were taking possession of the promised land. Joshua has spent enough time with God to know that God loves the people and wants the Israelites to be faithful. So the last thing that Joshua does before he dies is to invite the Israelites to recommit to their covenant with the God of Abraham, to be God's people as God is their God, which they do enthusiastically. Joshua says, choose this day whom you will serve. And the people respond, we will serve the Lord, for God is our God. And in both of these stories, from Joshua and from the Gospel of John, the people have an opportunity to, as you say, recommit uh, to following following God. And I think that is important, uh, because I think historically, uh, we Christians have been more at ease talking about commitment than recommitment. Uh, right, so I'm thinking about how uh, commitment is, is uh, an important thing in many churches, uh, whether that means in some denominations maybe going up uh, at an altar call and accepting Jesus as your Savior, or in other denominations like this one being baptized. Uh, Christians have uh, the, the, the conviction that 
uh, following God uh, involves making a commitment that is lifelong, and that is true. Um, but sometimes uh, it can be hard to sustain that commitment. Some folks find it easier than others. Uh, but especially for uh, those of us who find it uh, occasionally quite difficult to maintain our lifelong commitment to following God, I think it's helpful to have opportunities to uh, thoughtfully uh, recommit uh, to following Jesus uh, and exploring what it would be like uh, to do that even after our life uh, circumstances change. Uh, so in the story from Joshua today, um, the Israelites have been following God for a while, but now they're in this new circumstance of adjusting to living in the promised land and adjusting to living without Joshua. So they have an opportunity to uh, thoughtfully recommit. And the same in the gospel, uh, where Jesus' followers have an opportunity to kind of think about what it means to continue following Jesus given this peculiar teaching uh, and to recommit. I think uh, opportunities to recommit are, are important. Um, it reminds me of how uh, in church, about four or five times a year, uh, we reaffirm our baptismal vows here in church um, uh, because we believe it's, it, it's helpful to, re, uh, to, uh, to say those multiple times over our lives to kind of sustain us, that that helps us if we're going to continue to, to follow Jesus. Um, it kind of gets at the idea that uh, uh, life isn't just smooth sailing uh, when you follow Christ, but it's an adventure, and we need sometimes to, uh, uh, to, to recommit. I think marriage is like that, too. Uh, I remember the day that Melville and I got engaged. Uh, we were visiting some longtime family friends, and they took us out to dinner to celebrate. And at the end of the evening, we were saying goodnight, and uh, one of the friends said to me, you have to work at it every day. That felt kind of daunting. <laughs> uh, he'd been married for 40 plus years and I hadn't, so I you know, tried to uh, be grateful for the advice. Um, we've been married for 17 years now and I've come to disagree with our friend somewhat. Most days, at least for me, marriage does not feel like work. But you do have to choose each other every day. Some of you have heard this when I've preached at your weddings. Selfishness is a constant temptation when you are sharing your life with another person. Every couple argues from time to time. Occasionally, you'll be attracted to someone else. There may be days or weeks or months when it feels like you're not really connecting with your spouse and maybe you would be happier on your own. And sometimes you do need to separate from your spouse, particularly when there's violence or abuse in a marriage. You do need to turn away and choose a different life. But to stay married a long time, every day of a marriage, the amazing days and the really hard ones and the so-so days in between, you have to choose each other and make that commitment to each other every day. Uh, I kind of like how you sort of disagreed with your friend that about uh, when he said that marriage takes work. Um, because I think that whether we're talking about uh, a romantic relationship or any other kind of relationship, uh, that yes, work is involved, but as Christians, we also believe that God's grace uh, can be abundantly uh, present, uh, be both because there's, uh, uh, relationships can be deeply rewarding um, and because we believe God is there to help us when relationships are difficult, to help us uh, recommit if that's going to be what's healthy. Um, and I also think that God's grace is present because we humans mess up in relationships uh, uh, rather frequently, I would say, uh, but that God is there to invite us uh, uh, to re-engage, to, to say sorry if we need to, um, and, and, uh, and step back into the relationship. This all makes me think of the relationship between Peter and Jesus uh, as it unfolds in the Gospel of John. Uh, uh, Peter, in the first chapter of John, begins to follow Jesus, but it is not all smooth sailing. In particular, uh, you might know this uh, story, after Jesus is arrested, um, Peter uh, three times is asked, hey, aren't you one of the folks who, uh, who follows Jesus? 
And uh, Peter says, nope. Me? Jesus? Who? I don't know who that guy is. Jesus? Jesus who? Right. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so Peter denies him uh, to save his own skin so he doesn't get in trouble. Uh, and afterwards, Peter feels uh, quite terrible about it. Um, but God calls us not to perfection, uh, but to reconciliation when that's healthy. And so, uh, after Jesus is raised from the dead, uh, Peter is out with his, uh, his fishing buddies, fishing on a boat, and Peter sees Jesus on the shore and is so excited to see him that he leaps, I would not do this, he leaps into the water and swims ashore uh, to see Jesus. And then uh, Jesus asks him three times, note that parallel to the three denials, Jesus asks him three times, will you feed my sheep? Will you feed my lambs? In other words, will you care for my people? And Peter says yes. Uh, and despite his mistake, he is fully redeemed and reconciled, right? We believe God calls us not to perfection, but to reconciliation. There's only one time we hear about Jesus asking Peter this question, do you also wish to go away? But I doubt it is only the ever, it is the ever, only the, I doubt it is ever the only time that Jesus asked Peter that question, or that Peter asked it himself. We just hear about it this one time. I suspect Jesus asked Peter, or Peter asked himself, do you wish to go away every day? And sometimes, like on Good Friday, Peter's answer is yes, I do want to go away. He leaves, and he finds that his life without Jesus is empty and meaningless and devoid of purpose. And eventually, Peter changes his answer. Other times, perhaps most of the time, Jesus asks Peter, do you also wish to go away? And Peter reflects and prays and responds, to whom can I go? You have the words of everlasting life. Peter chooses Jesus over and over and over again. He recommits to Jesus, and this adventure, as you put it, David, this adventure of following Jesus goes on. I love how uh, when we are saying our baptismal vows or when we are reaffirming them, uh, we say, uh, whenever we fall into sin, help us repent and return to the Lord, right? That's the word whenever and not if, right? God doesn't call us to perfection, uh, but to return. And so today's teaching, the difficult teaching from Jesus about uh, those who eat me will live forever, um, we can read as being about the Eucharist, communion that we share uh, every Sunday when we uh, consume the bread and wine or, or one of the other, or even if we just receive a blessing. And I think that communion is one of the main ways that we as Christians can recommit. So I'm thinking of something, uh, Gia, that your seminary professor, Lewis Weil, said. Uh, Lewis Weil uh, was a professor of liturgics, so that means he was an expert in how Episcopal worship works. Uh, and he once said that the Eucharist uh, is, can do you remember the quote? Eucharist is the repeatable part of initiation. Thank you, thank you. Eucharist is the repeatable part of initiation. And basically what that means is that in our church, uh, baptism is the way we uh, start our adventure of following Jesus, uh, whereas Eucharist is a way that uh, we can uh, almost take like a spiritual pit stop uh, of a chance to recommit uh, to, following, uh, to following Jesus. What I notice when I look around church this morning and when I look around those worshiping online are people who chose God today. It's 2024. We've got lots of options for how to spend our Sunday mornings. None of us had to be here, but we are. Perhaps at times in the past, we did not choose God, but God still chose us. And when we were ready to recommit, God was here waiting for us, longing for us to come back. Every day we can recommit to this journey with God and say yes to today's leg of this adventure of faith. 
And we trust that the one who has the words of everlasting life is with us, sharing the road with us every day.